Welcome to part three of my four part series that I'm doing in VR 180. Now I'm in the jungles of Thailand, but before we get started on this adventure, I just wanna let you know that you can best view this using your headset and headphones. However, if you have just your phone or you just have your computer screen, remember that you can scroll around at any time and see what's going on up there, over there, down below, or this way. My second film in this series was all about how social media has negatively impacted this world. But there is a lot of things that have had positive change because of social media. So I've flown halfway across the globe to Thailand to cover one of these stories. After three planes and 25 hours of flying, I finally landed in the city of Chiang Mai. The first thing you notice is the sights and the sounds of the city. There are so many people moving in so many different directions. And it's a place that's not only filled with locals, but it's filled with tourism. After sitting on a plane for hours, I stretch my legs by walking to the nearby temples in the old city of Chiang Mai. When people come to Thailand, they come to experience the beaches, they come to experience the temples, places like this. They come for the food, but also they come to see the elephants, especially in this region and a lot of times people are coming to have that magical experience where they go and ride on an elephant. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. There's a bunch in there. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Okay, yeah, good. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so when I first came to Thailand, you know, what you see online is what you see of Thailand. So you see people at places like this. This is one of the popular destinations. I'm at the wall, the city gates, and everyone's here just taking Instagram photos of birds in their hands and all of that. And when it comes to the elephants, you see people riding them, especially six years ago when it was my first time here, all I saw were pictures of people riding elephants but in reality to get an elephant to allow someone to ride on its back you have to go through this process that's called elephant crushing which basically the babies are stripped from their mothers and they're beaten until they give in and it's gotten more attention because of the awareness being spread on social media after being in Chiang Mai for less than 24 hours, you really feel the busyness of the city. So I decided to rent a motorbike and go explore the surrounding areas. As soon as you leave the main city, you realize that you're in the middle of a massive jungle. So I just made it up to Doi Sup Tep, which is one of the most famous temples here in Chiang Mai. It actually sits on top of the mountain overlooking the entire city. But we need to go out to where the elephants are, and that's deep into the jungle. So that's where we're going to head next. After three hours in the back of a pickup truck, we arrived at Bee's Elephant Sanctuary. Now they've adopted a hands-off policy to elephant tourism. And so the experience is completely different than you would expect at a elephant camp. 
So I arrived with the sun setting in the sky and settled in, not sure what to expect of the coming days. Sanctuaries aren't your typical tourist attraction. At an elephant camp, you go, you pay a fee, and you touch and you ride the elephants for a short period of time. At a sanctuary, it's a much more immersive experience. So our first day was actually helping out take care of these animals. And just from our short period of time doing this, you really get a sense of how much time and effort it takes to take care of an elephant day to day. We've got a pretty big chunk of jungle that we're trekking through. We're looking for the elephants and we think that they're gonna be down by the river. During the day, the mahouts take them out here in the jungle to go eat, to just roam around. And when it gets hot out, they go and like to play in the big river. Because Bees has taken this radical approach to elephant tourism, we have to go find the elephants where they're at rather than having the elephants come to us. So our day is spent trekking through the dense jungle and wading through the rivers to try and find where they're at in this maze of trees. Okay, they are right around the bend here. This is like the moment that we've flown across the world to capture. We spent the rest of the day following the elephants and just observed as they lived their life as they should be. On our trek, we chatted with Emily and Berm. They are the founders of Bees Elephant Sanctuary, and they gave us a lot more insight into the issues of elephant tourism and why there is no simple solution to changing this industry. So Thailand's the home of elephants, land of smiles, I want to get out there, I want to see um, the elephants. And so when I got here, I realized that there was actually quite a lot of welfare issues for the elephants in Thailand. And that many of the elephants were abused, neglected, um, not necessarily um, by the owners on purpose, but because that's just the way it is and they don't have the same education and they don't have the same resources. It's so easy from the Western world to look in, to see newspaper articles and, and videos online and people sharing stories and thinking, OK, I'm going to share this and tell the world, let's boycott Thailand because of what, how they treat their elephants. The world over has problems everywhere. To boycott the country would mean that you're making innocent people suffer. So say if the government decided, OK, we'll listen to the Western influence and ban riding, then we're going to have the same situation that we had when logging was banned because we can't simply just overnight create all of these safe spaces for elephants. Unfortunately, the land has been stolen. Uh, trees have been logged. 75% of the forest is gone. So there's not enough spaces for elephants to be released. There's around 4,000 registered captive elephants in Thailand. And so where do they all go? How do we manage them? And I think that eventually um, tourism has to have the full shift to move towards a more ethical and responsible way of keeping their elephants, but it's going to take time. Education is the key, providing resources and supporting communities and supporting people that own elephants, helping guide them. It's going to take a lot of time to be able to get people to move in the direction of giving the elephants land, giving the elephants space, giving them the freedom to just be an elephant because many of the elephants have been moved to the cities. But I do believe in the future we can work towards projects that have land and space for elephants. I really believe that.
With every post that we create, there's an opportunity for us to make a difference in the world. Here in Thailand, elephant tourism is evolving and it's getting better the more awareness that is being brought to the subject. And social media is one of the driving forces to help bring change. So next time you go out and you post or you create a video, just think of who the audience is on the other side of the screen and what kind of choices they're gonna make after seeing that piece of content from you.